Have you ever gotten betrayed by your so-called friend? What do you think is the cause of that betrayal? Is it because of jealousy or is it because of greed? If that's the case, then maybe you'll relate to the story we'll be tackling today. Hi, I'm Rick, and for today, we will be discussing a Philippine folktale that you have possibly heard of, a fable from pre-Spanish period passed down from older generation to the present and was later on published by our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. The Monkey and the Turtle The Monkey and the Turtle is a Philippine fable and is considered as the first children's folktale in the Philippines. According to Dr. Cerezo, the author of the fable is unknown, as it was passed around in the Philippines for a very long time. This particular fable was published by Rizzo along with another fable from Japan called The Battle of the Monkey and the Crab. Both fables had significant similarities leading up to a notion that the fables are likely to have the same origin. Moreover, the Philippine tale could be a modification of the Japanese version or it could be the opposite. Both tales were published by Rizal in an article titled Two Eastern Fables. Rizal's version of The Monkey and the Turtle is recognized as one of the first comic book written by a Filipino. The Monkey and the Turtle is known to having originated from the Philippines. The origin of the Ilocano, Kapampangan, Visayan, Tagalog, and Tinguan variants of the narrative, according to scholars, is a folktale from the Bagaba people who lived during the pre-Spanish times. And now, let's proceed to the story itself. The Monkey and the Turtle The tortoise and the monkey found once a banana tree floating amidst the veins of a river. It was a very fine tree, with large green leaves and with roots, just as if it had been pulled off by a storm. They took it ashore. Let us divide it and plant each its portion. They cut it in the middle, and the monkey, as the stronger, took for itself the upper part of the tree, thinking that it would grow quicker for the leaves. The tortoise, as the weaker, had the lower part that looked ugly, although it had roots. Hello, Mr. Monkey. How are you getting on with your banana tree? Alas, it has been dead a long time. And yours, Miss Tortoise? Very nice indeed, with leaves and fruits. Only I cannot climb up to gather them. Never mind. I will climb and pick them for you. Do, Mr. Monkey. And so, they walked towards the tortoise's house. As soon as the monkey saw the bright yellow fruits hanging between the large green leaves, he climbed up and began pondering, munching, and gobbling as quick as he could. But, hey, give me some too. Not even a bit of skin. If it is eatable, haha! The tortoise meditated revenge. She went to the river, picked up some pointed snails, planted them around the banana tree, and hid herself under a coconut shell. When the monkey came down, he hurt himself and began to bleed. You wretched creature! Here you are! You must pay for your wickedness! You must die! But as I am very generous, I will leave to you the choice of your death. Shall I pound you in a mortar? Or shall I throw you into the water? Which do you prefer? The mortar! The mortar! I am so afraid of getting drowned. Oh ho! Indeed! You are afraid of getting drowned. Now, I will drown you! And... Going to the shore, 
he slung the tortoise and threw it in the water. But soon, the tortoise reappeared swimming and laughing at the deceived artful monkey. And now, let's discuss the elements present in the fable, the monkey and the turtle. Let's start with the characters present in the story. Animals are portrayed as characters in fables. Animals are used to emphasize how fictitious and lighthearted the stories are. There are two characters in the story, namely the turtle and the monkey. The characterizations of each differ from each other. The turtle is depicted as a kind character who is trusting and unsuspecting. She also displays resilience and cleverness by seeking revenge on the monkey, making her the protagonist of the story. On the other hand, the monkey is portrayed as a selfish and cunning animal who embodies dishonesty and greed. The monkey gets to create the conflict in the story for his cunning act, making him the antagonist. Another element of a fable is the settings. The story takes place in a forest or a jungle, a place that suits the whole plot of the story and the characters. For instance, in the first scene, the monkey and the turtle interacted beside the river, having to find a banana tree floating. Another scene takes place at the house of the turtle, suggesting that the story itself uses a jungle or forest setting where both characters and animals usually dwell. Let us go into the narrative of the story. The fable introduces the characters of the story, as well as the setting, which takes place in a forest in a nearby river. The story begins with the monkey and the turtle having to find a tree branch floating in the river. They decided to split it in half. The monkey got the upper part while the turtle got the ugly lower part but had roots. The conflict arose when the turtle needed help picking her fruits. The monkey insisted on picking the turtle's fruit. But as soon as the monkey saw the bananas, he climbed up, munching all of them quickly. The turtle meditated revenge. She picked up some pointed snails, tatted them around the banana tree, and hid herself under a coconut shell. When the monkey came down, he began to bleed. The monkey then searched for the turtle. After searching, the monkey decided to let the turtle choose her own death. The turtle chose the mortar because she was afraid of getting drowned. The monkey, after finding out the turtle was afraid of water, decided to let her drown instead. He then threw the turtle into the water, but soon, the turtle reappeared, swimming and laughing at the deceived monkey, teaching him a lesson. The Moral Lesson of the Story The key takeaway from the fable is to not be greedy. The moral lesson is about the consequences of being dishonest and selfish. Thank you for listening. Remember to trust your guts and never let greed take over.